Hey friends, CloudBart here, just bringing you some updates about uh, AWS. Recently went and took the SysOps exam, it was a good time. I haven't taken it since back in 2017, so I was interested to kind of see what had changed about it, what they had added. Uh, of course, as an instructor, I go and I take these tests kind of with a different objective in mind. I already had this certification, so my goal was to go out there, learn as much about it, um, try to bring those expectations back so that I can shape you know, the training material that I make. So if you're looking to get certified, let's help you find some resources because that's probably why you found this video in the first place. So over here, we can take a look online if you do a AWS SysOps exam guide, uh, that'll get you over onto the certification site. It should be here slash certification. Uh, the SysOps administrator is one of the associate level certifications. So you've kind of got the uh, cloud practitioner is the entry level one, and then you've got the, the three associates developer architect and sysops. Sysops is unique amongst those three because it's more about the administration parts of running workloads in AWS, whereas the solutions architect is about being able to design, take input from the design process, craft solutions, being able to kind of navigate that more. And the developer piece is more about making sure that you understand some of the key data store and authentication pieces that you have to use when you're running AWS enabled applications. So SysOps is very much still in that position. And after taking the exam, I think it is uh, taking it again, I feel like it is pretty representative of the job duty that they're looking for here. So some of the key themes that I remembered uh, overall were that again, the well-architected framework is the backbone to all of these. You've probably heard me say it before if you watched any of it. So be familiar with that well-architected framework, use it as a guide to help you study more. On top of that, use the SysOps associate provided material. And over on the page, you can see that the first one they have there is the exam guide. Uh, and the exam guide is just gonna kind of go over what the course is about, uh, what the exam is about, some of the information about how long the test is itself, what types of questions. They give you some background on what sort of knowledge you need to possess. Now, I think this is pretty accurate. Um, having some hands-on experience will teach you a lot of the little gotchas that they might be trying to call out here. Um, but good hard study on the specific services that they include in the exam is gonna go as far as anything. Uh, they do bring up the command line a little bit, so we'll talk about that some. And then down here, of course, implementing security concepts. Huge part of all of the AWS exams. Definitely need to understand the policy parts of it. And then down into here, they talk a little bit about the importance of monitoring. Definitely want to shout this one out for sure. There's a lot of like scenario-based questions on the exam where they're going to ask like, um, okay, you want to be able to detect this type of failure, uh, this uh, quickly. You need to be able to look at the solutions that they're recommending there and say, okay, well, this one uses like the CloudWatch default metric and that's too long. We need a one minute metric. Um, we could either do the detail metric or maybe have a custom metric push it. So there was a lot on the metrics um, on CloudWatch, but also just general monitoring practices as well. And also thinking about what you're going to find in logs and why that's interesting. Uh, what sort of events might commonly occur there and using log filters or Lambda functions to kind of pull that out. So all that fits kind of, I think, generically into the monitoring um, in reaction systems. And they also talk a little bit about the auditing elements as well. And of course, big shout out to networking. Definitely need to second that one. Uh, networking is crucially important for all of the AWS certifications, I think, especially with the SysOps one. They expect us to be able to understand uh, traffic delivery scenarios through VPCs, through security groups, NACLs, network interfaces, um, down to the EC2 workloads as well. So important pieces there. And then down into here, they go over some exam prep resources. And I definitely recommend this. As you can see, one of the ones that they have on here is the well-architected framework. I mentioned that first thing, their best practices for security and design crucial pieces. And I think what you'll find is that the well-architected framework documentation is the superset most of these other best practices pull pieces out of those and kind of uh, deep dive on them a little bit more. So a lot of good information. And of course, all of your lab and study time that you might be able to take advantage of uh, elsewhere too. Uh, moving on down in here, they talk about the types of questions. What I wanted to get down to though, were the specifically the actual domains. Though, uh, When we get into the domains though, this is uh, kind of the piece that I wanted to finish up chatting about today. It's just a little bit about what I remembered from each one of these sections. Uh, for those of you who were kind of prepping, now remember that I have quite a few years experience with AWS. So for me, I'm trying to call out, uh, I look for specific patterns and what they talk about in specific services. And then I also look to see, are there services that they talk about that weren't in it the last time I went? Uh, for example, X-Ray was mentioned once or twice in the SysOps exam. That was not part of the 2017 exam when I took it. So a couple of little things like that that had changed. 
Um, so the first one on here was monitoring and reporting, and look at that, it's 22% of the exam. I definitely would second this, um, specifically keeping in mind too that we're not just talking about host alive or traffic health monitoring, also billing. Okay, so there was quite a few questions on there about how to most effectively monitor costs. And of course, some of the tagging implications that go into all of that as well. Uh, recognizing that we're doing roll-up, multi-account billing roll-up concepts as well. So those were important to touch on. Uh, moving on down to number two, high availability. The key things with HA is to know what is HA by default. You always want to understand this about AWS services. If it runs at the, like, the global level, like identity to access management, it's already highly available. If it's a service like DynamoDB that runs at the regional level, it's not AZ specific, it's already HA. So we really definitely need to be familiar with the big services and what pieces are default highly available, also with the VPC networking components there as well. Final thing I'd mention about HA is definitely be familiar with some of the RDS survivability models. That was something that always stumped me on the earlier ones. Um, I've spent some time brushing up on it, but definitely be familiar with replication patterns. Uh, with RDS and other types of EC2 workloads. Moving down to number three, deployment and provisioning. Uh, for sure, definitely need to be familiar with the different ways of delivering um, application payloads to servers in different environments. Uh, also the notion of being able to pull content off of EBS volumes that you've moved around. Okay, there was a couple of questions about attaching um, and EBS volume states as well. Moving on down into, uh, oh, sorry, before we finish deployment and provisioning, definitely a lot of questions about CloudFormation as well. Uh, definitely didn't want to skip over that one. I got my little list here and trying to remember to check, check my notes. Along with the deployment and provisioning one here, I'd kind of want to point out performance tuning. There were a lot of questions that I remembered seeing about uh, load balancer and instance interactions or offloading content to S3 and the CloudFront. Some of those architectural patterns that can lead to good performance models. Also because that kind of also helps improve some of the provisioning and deployment parts of it. So we wanted to recognize those patterns. Uh, and then moving on down into storage and data management, definitely wanted to be familiar with the notion of rotating uh, various uh, data stores. So EBS volumes, working with S3 objects, rotating them out. A couple of questions about the idea of short-lived data stores and exporting that content out to get it off, uh, off of the, the running system and then bring it up and make it available again as well. So some of those kind of like live data manipulations. Moving on down to security and compliance, definitely a firm foundation in identity and access management. We need to understand the role uh, that roles play, <laughs> both for users and for systems, and of course for EC2 instances, um, and recognizing too that services interacting with one another, they need to often have roles built and policies that support that. The other one is, of course, we definitely need to know the Lambda role model as well, like the invocation versus the execution uh, permissions policies and the roles that are used there. Uh, remember, somebody needs permission to run the function, and that could be granted in a few ways, and then the function itself needs permission to go interact with other resources. Lots of good AWS documentation to go check out on that. Moving down to six, networking. Uh, definitely public-private subnetting, the notion of being able to isolate by virtual private cloud. Uh, one thing that I did notice that I wasn't on there in 2017 was you couldn't peer across regions back then. On this exam, they were definitely calling out some specific scenarios where you wanted to remember that that's possible now. You can VPC peer in the same account across region. We didn't have that ability a while back. So that was one of the new services that I kind of remember them adding there. Uh, uh, the other piece on the networking, a lot of load balancer concepts. I'm definitely being familiar with how to terminate SSL certificates on load balancers, very important, and some of the other SSL options. Couple of questions about certificate manager. Not so much how to specifically perform something, but some of it's, does it support this or not support this? Definitely remember uh, some of that stumps me once in a while if I don't keep up on ACM. Uh, domain seven then, automation and optimization. Again, I think the key one here was uh, looking at CloudWatch and thinking about what metrics do I gather and then what actions do I perform? And some of that stuff was a little tricky too. You have to, we do wanna know some of the most popular metrics CPU utilization is one. Um, we want to remember that CloudWatch in EC2 doesn't get to see memory usage by default. So that's an important one. <laughs> you can see where the memory allocation is, but you don't get to see all of the, the thread level or process level consumption. So they kind of try to stump you on some of that there as well. Excellent. So that kind of covers the big domains there. The final part that I would mention is the well-architected framework and the notion of operational excellence. Uh, there was a lot of pieces in here about cost optimization um, and considering um, 
questions that would be presented to you where you need to decide on the most cost effective way to do it or the most secure way to do it or the one that uh, requires the least amount of administrative overhead there. So key pieces there, which I think kind of gets more into some of the architecting parts, but those are definite patterns to kind of recognize. Now, I've been gabbing away here, friends. There are a lot of resources available online already. If you have questions, drop them in the YouTube chat there. Hit me up on Twitter at CloudBart. I'd love to help uh, be a voice to help you through whatever certifications you're going on. If you just wanna ask me, Bart, I don't know about this. Is this on the exam? I didn't wanna dish everything out, but I'm happy to chat with you on the side as well. So I hope that helps you guys out in the future there, and we'll see you back on another CloudBart lesson. Happy certifications, and uh, we'll see you out there in the cloud. <music>